sure a lot of you know already the details about the all-in-one, um, but just to recap, um, it is a first position HELOC. It does combine your banking with your mortgage, um, and it's designed in this really neat way that allows you to pay your principal balance down first before paying any interest. Um, totally different than a traditional mortgage, which you know, pays so much interest first before it even really starts to touch the majority of the principal. Um, so in doing it this way, you know, we save tons and tons of money um, in, in interest dollars and, you know, and it, it knocks off a lot of years off of your mortgage as well. So uh, when it comes to the all-in-one loan, there is a, a $65 annual fee from that you mentioned last time we spoke but it's waived the first year, right? So that's still valid, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. There is a 10% required down payment. So this, for the most part, this eliminates a lot of your, say, average American household that doesn't have anywhere near 10% to put down on a, on a product like this. So that, that definitely can be, you know, a bit of a challenge, but, from our last conversation, you were saying how there are other ways we can get to that 10% down, such as 401ks, retirement accounts, pension plans, Roth, money markets, CD funds, cash value life insurance policy. So we're able to dip mm -hmm. into other assets to come up with that 10%. But not only that, in, in, in addition to having to you know, need the 10% down in order to get the all in one, you also need to have 10, 10 to 15% in reserves. And, and I think that's what you meant in terms of us being able to, when the lenders look at a client's situation, their portfolio, they're able to use that. So correct, correction there. They're able to use that as their uh, assets that they already have in play to come up with that 10 to 15% reserves, but they do need 10% down uh, liquid uh, to, to sure. dump into that property. So, right. A... So when we're talking about a purchase, we do need at least 10% down and it does have to be, um, be able to be liquidated because you are using those funds. Um, and then for the reserves, that 10 to 15% of the loan amount um, that's where you can dip into, you know, other areas where you have money saved, where you don't necessarily need to use it, but it does, um, you know, have to be a cash value. Got it. Which goes directly, I'm going to skip over a couple things here, is this mm -hmm. direct access to equity. So as soon as I put the 10% down or more on the all-in-one, I, I will have some of that uh, available as a home equity line of credit, a, a revolving line of credit that it can uh, use day to day. So that is, you know, one of the benefits there. Uh, moving down the line, you need 700. Well, if I could just stop you for just a quick second. Go ahead. Um, as far as the direct access to equity, so you, you are able to borrow up to 90% um of uh, the loan to value amount so once you put that 10 percent down you're actually not going to be able to borrow that right away like right after the loan closes once you start um you know paying down your balance more and you start gaining more equity that's when you're going to have the direct access access to that equity got it so what would you say the timeline in terms of let's say i put 10 percent down on 500k on a, on a mortgage, so that's 50,000. Um, mm -hmm. About how long do you think it would take to, to get access to about how much in percentage of, uh, of equity? Right. Well, I mean, that really depends on the deposits that are going into the account and the expenses that are coming out of the account, right? So mm -hmm. if you think about your numbers that are up there on the screen, um, I see the total 20K. You know, if that monthly is going into the account, as soon as that goes into the account, you're going to have access to that 20,000 right away. And then obviously, you know, you need to take into consideration the expenses that you're going to be paying out of the account. Um, but you'll still have access to that the same way that you have access to it to pay your expenses. Okay, good to know. Then moving down the line, 
credit score or higher uh, in order to get approved. You have two options. You can go with a three-year or a five-year fixed rate, or the other one is the uh, adjustable, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the adjustable rate average for 2021 and 2020, what have you been seeing? Was it 3.75 or It's a 3.75, yeah. Currently, that's the floor rate. Got it. That's the floor. So, the so it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the rate that you're going to be locked at which again is important because there's a cap on how high the rate can go mm -hmm. and it depends on the rate that you're locked in at. So the 3.75 is the floor rate, meaning it can't go any lower than that, but your locked rate could be lower than that. Okay, say that one more time. Give us an example on that and I'll write it out. So, you know, if the LIBOR right now is at 0.018, and the margin is 3.5, then at no cost to you at this time, the, the locked in rate that you would get is 3.518, right? Or I'm sorry, no, 3.68. So that would be your locked in rate, but the floor rate is still at 3.75. So the interest amount that you're getting charged on is going to be charged at a 3.75 rate. But if rates do continue or do start to go up, well, there's a cap of 6% over the locked in rate. So your rate can't go any higher than 9.68, not 9.75. Does that make sense? Yeah. So as I'm writing it, the cap is 6% above the floor rate. Above the rate that's locked in at the time. Originally, like, right, for example, if I got locked in at 3.68, right? If I lock that in for, say, three years. Correct. And then after the three years, we're in 2021. So, say, interest rates start to go up, which is highly unlikely. But let's just say it does the most that my, my rate could jump after the three years are up would be 6% from the 3.68. Right. Got it. Okay, so the cap is 6% uh, above locked rate. Yes. So that's why the locked rate has some importance, you know, but the floor rate um, is there because if LIBOR goes down to zero, you know, and we only have our margin, we still need that cushion. So it's not going to be able to go below the 3.75, at least not currently. Got it. Got it. And that, that brings up just a quick uh, recap. I think I asked this before, which was, you know, uh, someone in my particular situation, and I know I have a lot of clients, higher income, right? Um, I'm planning on dumping in probably 20 grand each and every month of like, you know, majority of that being cash flow. Would you, when you're looking at a situation like that, would you rather lock that person into a fixed rate? Um, I would say no, my personal opinion, because the rate at which you're paying it down is going to be so quick that it really shouldn't make that big of a difference. The nice thing about the simulator is um, that's a question that it can kind of answer. I mean, there are some, you know, features within the simulator that kind of assume different things. So we'll go through all of that, but we can change that option from an adjustable rate initially to a three year fix and then adjustable rate. And we can see what differences it shows us. Okay, cool. And then we can go over like the advantages of a fixed versus adjustable and kind of see the yeah, differences yeah, with that. So moving down, we, you had also mentioned that this all in one loan has been around for over 15 years. Or 15 years. Over 15 years. Yeah, right? over over 15 years, and and in that time frame, there's never been a default. So in other words, foreclosure. Right. Yeah. On 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 any of these all-in-one loans delivered by CMG specifically, CMG Financial. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yes. And then, um, you know, like you said earlier, there's there's you do get direct access to equity depending on how much you put down. I'm assuming and the 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 time frame of how much you're putting in, then there's, well, go ahead. This loan is also, it is used for purchases, but it's also used for refinances. So, um, you know, 
for purchases, yeah, it is depending how much you put down for sure and then how much you continue to put in each month. Um, for refinances, it could be a little bit different depending on how much equity you already have in the home. Um, and that's where a lot of people see that benefit when they refinance into this because, you know, they've already been paying down their home so much that they have those equity dollars and then now they already have access to that. Got it, got it. So th this is more so for people who have an existing mortgage and they want to get the all-in-one, they want to convert. It's for both. I mean, either Got way, it. you're going to have direct access to equity. You know, if you purchase a home and you put 20% down and we use the program that, you know, only really requires 10% down, you already have that remaining 10% as access. You know, you have that at your hands. Got it. Got it. And then um, just moving down. Also, it's pretty simple, easy, convenient banking. The only drawback is there's no uh, a physical a bank when it comes to the all-in-one loan that we can go into. Although we're able to bank at all the other, you know, ATMs, we can get what we need, we can get cash out mm -hmm. when we need, and it, every for the most part, everything's online banking, correct? Correct. Yeah. Got it. You know, but it does have all the same features of you know any other bank account, which is nice because it has the automatic withdrawals. You can um, transfer from a different bank account to this bank account. So it does still, you know, it is set up to still be very easy for the consumer. Got it. Got it. And then it takes about a month to close, which is similar to maybe a first position HELOC. Um, yeah, I mean, so right now we're seeing, you know, like 30 to 45 days um, just because of kind of all the craziness that's been going on, but mm -hmm. hopefully it is calming down. So it is starting to get closer to, um, you know, that 30 day mark now. Definitely for purchases, it is 30 days. You know, there are obviously deadlines that, that need to be met um, for refinances. It's more like the 30 to 45 days, 45 max usually. Um, and that's very similar to, to any traditional loan currently, you know, any, any mortgage loan, you're going to see those numbers right now. Got it. Got it. The other thing is no escrow account or in other words, impound account, another word for, for escrow, escrow, correct? Right. So, yes. so you, the homeowner, the one that gets the all in one loan for those watching the the property taxes is on you to pay. It's your responsibility. The advantage to that is that money that you were going to pay anyways to pay your property taxes instead of it sitting in a faraway account that you don't touch throughout the year. That money gets to sit in your actual loan. And then mm -hmm. when it's time, you pull it out of the all in one loan, you pay it. So that's, you know, if you're paying, say, 9000 a year in taxes or ten grand a year in taxes, that's quite a bit of money that gets to sit in the all-in-one bringing your cost of interest down on the property, which is pretty cool. Right. So that's exactly another, right. yeah. One of the main things that separates the all-in-one loan from a traditional mortgage and even a home equity line of credit in the first or second position is the fact that each and every deposit. So every time I pay money in to the all-in-one loan, it goes directly to principal. Nothing goes to interest until the actual due date, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that is very similar for those watching right now and everyone that'll catch the replay, very similar to a credit card, mm -hmm. right? So with a credit card, I swipe the card that very day it starts calculating interest but i don't get charged the interest same thing with the all-in-one as soon as i dump say my 20 grand let's say i dump it in all at once in the first month of of getting the all-in-one let's say my payment is due on the on the fifth of, of every month so on say the first i dump 20 in and I'm going to spend roughly six to seven grand out of that throughout the 30 days until the following month on the fifth. Well, whatever I pull out, the all in one starts calculating the interest, but it doesn't actually charge me until this day. Correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. So here's what's cool. 
for everybody watching, I dump 20 in on the 1st of January, and let's say my, my payment is technically on the 5th, so I you know paid it earlier. Uh, come February 1st, guess what happens? I'm gonna have another 20K to dump in. So if I get in my paychecks, for those watching, this is a great velocity banking strategy here for those watching is, mm -hmm. you get in your money, say before the due date, and then it has to recalculate what you're actually gonna get charged based on what's left owed. So in reality, maybe the first month my interest was looking like 500, but then it drops to 425 you know, mm -hmm. $75 savings by simply, you know, moving, uh, getting in that money early. So this is a huge, huge separation. And this was something that I was confused about myself. It's like, what is the real difference between the all-in-one and the first position HELOC other than the revolving mm -hmm. period? And it's mm -hmm. that right there. It's the fact that this thing functions like a credit card. Whereas a line of credit, the minute I take money out, I get charged interest. Like it'll start calculating. When I put money, when I put money back in, I get charged the amount of days that I had that money outstanding. So if I took a chunk for everybody, you guys understand what a chunk is. I take a chunk out, you know, lump sum of money out of my debt tool. I get charged interest from that day until I replenish it. It's not the same with the all in one. So that's a big, big distinction that I wanted to, you know, share with everyone. And then the payment itself on the fifth is only interest only mm -hmm. because you paid in your principal already each and every month in advance ahead of time for those that get paid four times a month twice a month or you have two two incomes husband and wife so husband gets paid twice a month wife gets paid four times a month so that's six paychecks all of that is going into the all-in-one way before uh, the due date in, in most cases. So that's a big advantage there. Other than that, yeah. is there anything that I missed? Well, and also um, because the loan is simple interest, like you have up there, it is extremely easy to calculate um, your interest payment basically every day. I mean, your interest payment, obviously at the, at the, on the 21st, which is when it's actually taken out of the account each month. Um, but every day you really can calculate how much interest you're going to be charged that day. So, so that's really cool that, you know, when, when you have that equation that you can use, you can just do it yourself and say, oh, this month, you know, this next month coming up, this is how much my payment's going to be. And you already know that. Right. That's, that's really cool. And for those that need a recap on how to calculate simple interest again is whatever, whatever the balance owed is, mm -hmm. right, we, we times it by the whatever the interest rate on our debt tool is, right. divide that by 365, and you'll, you'll get the daily uh, rate. Right, and that's then, the daily. So if you want the monthly, obviously, you would just divide it by 12. Divide right, by 12, um, right. And then that's how you would get your monthly payment, so yeah. Right, so that's a you know, quick little recap there on the, on the way we, we, we calculate it. And for the most part, everybody knows uh, Everybody in here that's watching for the most part either has a home equity line of credit already or a line of credit, personal line of credit, maybe a checking line of credit, credit cards. So you guys have already been kind of, you know, doing this. And then for those that are uh, in the process of getting your all in one, you'll want to get familiar with that. So at least you can uh, predetermine what your, what your payment's going to be. And it will fluctuate. Uh, it will change. Uh, typically yeah. it goes, it goes down. Over, over yeah, time it should go down <laughs> should go down over time definitely and um, I think another key key detail is um, worst case scenarios emergencies let's say I'm not able to uh, make my payment or you know things got rough lost my job covid 2.0 hits right the next covid hits uh, and, and and another you know unemployment throughout the country or whatever the case may be. I'm able to dip into um, my my debt tool just like I would a HELOC and, and, a, and a personal line of credit. But I think the other thing is, um, if I'm not mistaken, you can, uh, I guess, not make a payment if, if you were yeah, in that type of situation. You know, it, 
Right. It's not, you know, it's not really ideal for anybody. Right. But essentially you would be able to do that because um, if you know, you're not, if you're not able to make your payment, well, you don't technically have a principal payment. It's just allowing that principal balance to rise instead of to decrease. Right. So, and you have, you're basically just borrowing more money against the loan and you have up to that max 90% loan to value amount that you can borrow from. So, you know, you said worst case scenario, if somebody wasn't able to make their payment, the interest amount is still going to be coming out each month, but the balance is actually going to increase rather than decrease. 